In this tutorial, we'll learn all basic points you need to create your first video in Premiere Pro. After starting the program, such a window opens. Here we see a list of projects we have worked with before. Click on one of them. We will immediately open the last save of this project. Now create a new project. Here give a name to your project. And select the folder where it will be stored. The render line displays the options for the rendering. The options depend on your video card and operating system. There can be a software only option. But if there are alternative options, then it is better to choose them. Then the rendering depends on the power of your video card and software. The main working area of Premiere Pro opens in front of you. This is the project window, here we export and collect material. This is a timeline, the area on which the basic manipulations for installation are carried out. There is a monitor in which you play material from the timeline. This is a window for setting effects, I'll show its main features. Import your files. Double click in the project window. We select files. Click import. Now the files are in our program. With these buttons you can change the display of the material. There is another convenient import option. Open the file folder. And just drag the file into the project window. File added. By turning on the image view as a list and expanding it. We see file information. Now I'm interested in the number of frames per second in our feed. Basically it is 24 frames per second. Next, in a free place, right click. New item. Sequence. Here is a list of ready-made sequence presets for different formats. Now we need a sequence with an aspect ratio of 1920 on 1080. 24 frames per second. In this tab, you can manually set the parameters for the sequence. Give a name. OK. Now our timeline is active. To have many footages is better to select materials from them in a special window. Assembly. Here is the whole window so that it will be convenient to look through all the materials and choose what you need from it. You can quickly browse through the mouse cursor over the file. Using the drag and drop method, we can group files as we like. Double click on the footage opens a view window. Move the slider and view the file. This is a button to play and stop the video. This button to go forward one frame. And back. Using these buttons mark in and mark out select the desired fragment. Then just drag and drop the video into the timeline.
All the windows that are in front of us, you can swap, close or add new ones. For example, move our window with the project material up. I do not need these panels to work right now. I will close them. and increase the viewing monitor. On the timeline, you can drag the video directly from the project window. Double click on the clip opens the preview monitor. In this layout of windows, it is inconvenient. You can transfer it to a window with a monitor that displays the work on a timeline. Now when you work on timeline, what you do will be displayed here and double-clicking on the file in the project panel opens the preview monitor. All these windows are quick and easy to configure. Then you will understand which panels you need in your work and configure everything for yourself. To increase the timeline, use this button. Empty spaces will appear in the video as a black background. Just select them and press delete. Now we will analyze the main tools for working on timeline. We can change the video speed using the rate stretch tool. We select it here in the panel. And just squeeze or stretch our video. Tool Snap in Timeline. Moves files along a timeline without it, the files will become exactly where you place them. This is not always convenient. By turning on this tool, files will stick to each other. This will speed up the installation process. Razor tool gives us the ability to cut the video. It is easy to use it. Point to the place where you want to cut the video and clicked. Now the video is cut into two parts. In Premiere Pro there is the ability to make color correction video. Now let's get acquainted with the main tools for this. Go to the color tab. Choose the fragment that you will paint. The Lumetri color window contains all the tools for color correction. Some of them have automatic white balance. Select this tool and click on the whitest part. Then you can fix it manually. Next are the settings. Expose. Contrast highlights. Others. In the Creative tab, there are Shadow Tint and Highlight Tint controls. They are made in the shape of circles and moving along them. The video color is edited. Further, color correction tools also go. Back to the Creative tab. Here we have a section with ready-made color grading options. By clicking the arrow on this monitor we can view and select them. Now lower the intensity. Fine. So individually, we can color each frame. To paint all the videos in one color version, we need to use, Adjustment Layer. Applying the settings to this layer, 
they will be visible on the bottom layer. Where is our video located? Go to the project window. New item. Adjustment layer. Check the settings in this window. They must match the settings of our sequence. Drag it to the timeline. And stretch to the whole clip. Now look who is on this clip. We lay on our new layer. The first video has changed a lot. We need to disable the color correction settings on the first layer. In the effects control window, find the Lumetri color tab and push this button. It disables applied effects. It works with all other effects. Now we will reduce the intensities on our layer where the settings were applied. And we get the video is completely colored. One of the main working areas for video editing. Effect Controls tab. Here, the settings for all applied effects and the main parameters of the video change. Here we can change position, and scale. Rotation by clicking on these arrows we cancel our changes. By clicking on the clock near the effect name. We create a keyframe. This is the anchor point of the animation. Put them at the beginning and end of the frame. Now put the keyframe at the beginning of the video. For the scale effect. At the first points, we poison the original values of the frame. And at the end, Change the values and put the face in the center of the frame. To learn more about how to animate in Premiere Pro, see our tutorial on this topic. Now we have a smooth movement of the camera forward. Next, we will deal with the Effects tab. All standard effects are collected here. We show how to work with them on the example of the effect. Fast Blur To apply it, double click. Now in the effect controls window, we see the settings for this effect. Now we will delete it and show the second method. How to add an effect to a video. You can just grab it and drag it onto the video we need. In the settings, changing the parameter value. Blurriness. We see how this effect works. Find out let's make a smooth blur at the end of the frame. Just as we did with the size of the video. Using keyframe. At the first point we leave a zero value and at the last we put more than 20. Also in the effects window, there are transitions which help make your composition more interesting. Let's see how to work with them. Choose the transition that suits us and insert between two frames. Everything is very simple. Double click on the transition to timeline. A window opens where we can configure it. You can increase the duration of the transition.
Sounds is an important part of your video. You can add music by dragging it from the project window to the timeline. Track a one and below specifically for music. You can adjust the volume of each track separately using Audio Track Mixer. Our file is on the first track, so we need to adjust the volume here. For example we will place an audio file on the second track. And controlling these buttons, we set different volumes between the tracks. If you want to make beautiful and interesting forms, we cannot do it without graphics. In the Essential Graphics panel, it is possible to work with graphic files. The program itself has a small set of standard graphic elements. I use ready-made kits from Easy Edit. To add this file to our video, Just grab and drag it to the desired location. By clicking on it twice, a window opens for editing it. Here we can change everything. Text, font, size, and layout. We have a lesson where we analyze in detail how to work with these files. We have a red bar on the timeline. This means that we have a section in which there are heavy elements for our computer and it will not be able to reproduce them without slowing down. To continue to work comfortably, we need to render this site. Press the I button at the beginning and the O button at the end of the section that we need to calculate. Press enter and wait. Now our site is playing perfectly. Before exporting the video, make sure that there are no input or output points on the timeline. If they are not removed, we will display only the selected part. Now we will display our video in full. Click File, Export, Media. In the export window you can see the video that we save. For all modern platforms, the most popular video codec is H.264 Preset leave the standard Here we change the name of our file and indicate where to save it Click Export. If you want to get acquainted with deeper export settings, I recommend watching our lesson on this topic. Fine. Our video has been saved. And immediately we can check it. Thank you.